So good day. My name is Marcus Awalu, matchup number 253, and then eight. And today I'll be talking about the case of Sunny Ang against public prosecutor. So for the background of the case, Sunny Ang Su Sun, who was the appellant, was committed to murder of his girlfriend, Jenny Chuck. And in this case, it's quite uh, interesting because the court uh, this is the first time where the court totally relied on circumstantial evidence to reach the conclusion that the appellant has murdered the victim because the body of the victim was never found. And for the background of the appellant and the victim, Sunny Ang Su Suan was from a middle class family, a very smart looking man. And in 1957, he quit training to be a teacher for a government scholarship to, to become a commercial pilot. But he was kicked out because he ignored safety regulation. And he also took part in the 1961 Singapore Grand Prix where he was the top 10 driver of the competition. Fun fact, uh, Sunny Ang was also a law student, but he didn't pass his uh, law school exam. And yeah, for for the background of the victim, her name is Jenny Chuck Cheng Kit, a waitress at uh, Odin Bar and Restaurant at uh, North Bridge Road in Singapore. Her education level compared to Sunny Ang uh, was considered as quite low because uh, her education level is only primary three. Uh, her salary... She earns about she earns about ninety dollar a month, and her main source of income was the ten ten dollars she earned each day in tips uh, from customer. So she already had two children who live with uh, who live with a husband whom she, whom she married according to Chinese religion before before you know before she met uh Sunny. But yeah, of course, they eventually separated with her husband. So for the case fact, uh. This uh, offence was committed at sea near two islands of Singapore and the islands is known as, is known as Pulau Dua or, sis, uh, or Sister Islands. And the appellant had hired a sampan from a boatman named uh, Yusuf Ahmad and on his direction, uh, on, on his direction, the boatman brought the appellant and Jenny to a place near the two islands where, where, where the boatman dropped the anchor and according to, to the appellant, his object or his main goal of going there is to collect coral with his girlfriend. However, the prosecution contended that his real intention was to murder the girl because, uh, you know, uh, in pursuit of the intention, he assists her to put on diving equipment. But, you know, however, Jenny, being an inexperienced diver, was wearing a flipper which had previously been cut by the appellant. And this has resulted in a diver loss of equilibrium and also affected the mobility of Jenny and according to to Yusuf the boatman the appellant didn't act like he was you know he was worried about Jenny while trying to while, while, while on the way to St. John Island to call the police to save Jenny and for example when the five fishermen were, were uh, where Yusuf found for help were diving into the sea to, to search for Jenny, and uh, Sunny act like nothing happened. And this has eventually become a key witness. Uh, I mean, uh, Yusuf had a kind of key witness for this case. And also, for the help, the body of the disease has never been found, and there was overwhelming evidence on the record that the appellant murdered her. And in this case, as I mentioned just now, the court totally relied on circumstantial evidence, and the cumulative effect of our evidence was so compelling and cut. has no doubt that the appellant has murdered the victim, Jenny. And the jury took just two hours to decide on a guilty verdict and the justice uh, but truth said uh, the only wrong that the only fault that uh, Jenny committed was falling in love with Sunny. And also the courtroom, as you can see this uh, see on this uh, photo, this is a uh, Sunny Ang's uh, sister, Miss Julie Ang, also a law student. Uh, she identified her brother's body after she was hanged on uh, 6th of February in 1967. So, based on my feeling, I, I would say that this is a very sad case. And because the victim was only 22 years old, even myself uh, is older than, than this victim. And I believe that, you know, there are a lot of things that she have not experienced in life. I actually feel a sense of sadness for doing this assignment. And then, yeah, I definitely agree with the judgment of the learned judge by sentencing the by sentencing Sunny Ang to death. And in this case, the circumstantial evidence provided by the prosecution has successfully proved the case beyond reasonable doubt. And to look into this case, we need to understand circumstantial evidence. 
So circumstantial evidence is an evidence of circumstances surrounding an event or offense uh, you know, from which a fact an issue may be inferred. Uh, some examples of uh, circumstantial evidence are, you know, motive, fingerprints, you know, possession of stolen goods, and presumption of facts. And yeah, circumstantial evidence is, as I mentioned just now, this, uh, we can see that uh, according to Section 8 of Evidence Act 1950, the facts admissible under this section can be classified under three headings, namely motive, preparation, and also conduct. So are there any motive in this uh, Sunny Ang's case? The answer is yes. So we, let me look at the insurance policies part. Uh, when Miss Chuck uh, disappeared, her accident coverage amounts to $400,000 and the payout were meant to go to either uh, Sunny Ang's mother or Miss Chuck's estate. So three weeks before she disappeared, Sunny Ang actually told Jenny to make a will leaving her entire estate to Sunny Ang's mother, whom Jenny hardly knew. And a day before uh, her uh, disappearance, one of her policies expired and three hours before the fate, fateful diving trip, which uh, would cost, cost her her life. Sunny Ang extended the policy for just five days. So the total payout would have amounted to own around $900,000 if several insurance policies had not you know, become suspicious about this, this matter. So the, the motive here is because since the appellant was a bankrupt and in need of money, so that's the motive for committing this crime. And look at the next uh, circumstantial evidence. Uh, so before this diving incident, uh, incidents, Ang actually traveled to Kuala Lumpur for holiday with uh, Jenny. So well, on the way back, uh, untold incident policies uh, amounted at uh, 100000 for Jenny, and the car crashed on the way back. So Sunny Ang, skilled enough to take part in the Grand Prix, said it was because he was trying to, you know, avoid a dog uh, while on the way back. But the passenger side of the car was suffered the worst damage. And uh, however, fortunately for Miss Chuck uh, in, in, at the time, uh, she only escaped with, uh, escaped, uh, with bruises. And for the third uh, circumstantial evidence from the boatman testimony, boatman, the boatman uh, Yusuf Ahmad, uh, made it clear that uh, Sunny Ang behaved normally all through the diving trips despite facing the loss of his, of, of his lover. So, as I mentioned just now, she acted like nothing happened. So, as you can see here, Section 5 of Evidence Act 1950, evidence may... Uh, you can see based on this section that two kinds of evidence can be admitted to court. The first is uh is called a fact and issue, and the second one is uh, called a relevant fact. So I give you an illustration right now. So for example, A drive to meet B in Saint Talk. Then B then murders uh, A using a gun and bury the body without B realizing it. C has witnessed the entire crime. So in the scenario above, there are two crucial bits of evidence. The first one is testimony of C. The witness and the second one is the gun used by B. C testimony will be in uh, the fact and issue as it directly tell what happened in, to the judge. And the gun with B fingerprint will be relevant fact because well it tells the judge that B held the gun. It doesn't tell the judge that B used it to kill A. So the judge has to infer that based of B's fingerprint. So as you can see here, this is how the case of Sony affected Malaysia. So in the case of uh, public prosecutor against uh, Pamanaban and Nalianen, Dato so Silawati and the three companions were murdered by her lawyer, Pamanaban, and he then burned the bodies completely in order to avoid detection. He was then charged and convicted for their murders through purely circumstantial evidence, just exactly the same like in the case of Sunny Ang. So the fact that uh, based on the Sunny Ang case, the federal court upheld the murder conviction for uh, Pamanaban and the two others in 2017. So from this assignment, I have learned that uh, how a case for a long time ago from another country could affect our laws and judicial decisions. As a matter of fact, a, a multitude of our laws still shares many similarities with the UK and also you know other Commonwealth countries such as Singapore, where where the case of Sunny Ang happened. And also, circumstantial evidence can also be said as very uh, as the very powerful evidence against a person accused of criminal activity. And lastly, I think that the court needs to analyze such circumstantial evidence with care in order to preserve its relevancy. So that's all from me. Thank you very much.